Please welcome Kate Merrill. Congratulations. Thank you so much. How does it feel? Um, really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The great actor cliche is someone says, I want you to be in a project, and you say, let me read the script. But in this situation, I suppose you didn't have to. No, I mean, I wouldn't have had to. I, I did read the scripts before I ever was aware that David Fincher was interested in me for the, for the role. Um, so that just made me want the part even more. I read with him a couple times, and I think he had to sort of send my tape to, to Kevin Spacey and make sure he signed off on me. So I had to wait a little while for that, which was terrifying. How long did Kevin make you wait? Well, you know, it was, a lo it was actually a pretty long, it was a few months before, um, before we had like the final, the final word. I wonder what it would say if Ke like Kevin's validation. Can you imagine <laughs> just waiting with that sword of Damocles over your head? Well, yeah, I can imagine because I was <laughs> for like two months. <laughs> no, I mean, if it hadn't turned out that way, it would... Uh, yeah, I would, I, would, I would feel very differently about Kevin Spacey today. <laughs> As, to this point, it's certainly positive, I imagine. Oh, I mean, now he's, you know, he's my on-screen boyfriend, right. so I love him. All right, well, listen, I'm only at, I'm at seven, so don't get past that. I only well, at seven. seven. You've seen enough. I've though, seen enough. You know. yeah. yeah. I wouldn't boyfriend seems a stretch. That, that is a stretch. Yeah. <laughs> that is a stretch, for sure. I follow you on Twitter, and you had tweeted out uh, in support of marriage equality, which is wonderful, and there was an article that came out talking about how there's going to be an NFL player who's on the verge of coming out of the closet in the next handful of months, which is pretty incredible, and you're in Brokeback Mountain. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You feel like your credentials are pretty tight when it comes to equality, aren't they? Yeah, well, I think it's ridiculous that we even have to have the conversation about it. I think it should just, you know, it should just be a no-brainer. Are storytellers responsible for telling those stories? People who can make choices? Yeah, I think so. I think that's, I mean, that's one of the reasons why being an actor is, is so exciting. To tell, you know, sometimes we tell really dark stories and um, sometimes we tell ridiculous, you know, funny stories that maybe don't have as much meaning as, say, a Brokeback Mountain does. Um, being a part of something like that is so special and so unique. And do you know when you're doing, you've made that choice to be in that film, that it is that, that it is actually bigger than just being a film? Um, honestly, at the time, I knew it was important, but I had no idea how much it would resonate and how important it would then be, you know, um, for the rest of my life and, and how much it moves people. What do you remember from Heath? Um, well, I remember I was really concerned because I, am, uh, I was not that much younger than him and I was playing his daughter, so I thought, oh gosh, this is going to be a horrible mistake. Um, but I, I wasn't going to say anything about it, so um, I was really nervous that, that it wasn't going to be real. Um, and I was so wrong because he's such an incredible actor and, and you know, they made me look pretty young as well. And, um, and he was very, very... Um, very sweet and sort of, um, he kind of took care of me. I mean, it, it wasn't my first movie, but I really felt like it was in a lot of ways. Let's time travel for a second. Oh. Let's look at that. No, what? Mom. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> She's been up all night. That's embarrassing. <laughs> my dad usually calls when he's going to be late. Oh, geez. Was it unusual for your dad to work on a Saturday night? That's he never did. But a man called around dinner time. Do you know what the call was about? <laughs> okay, it's over now. Oh, God. You refused to... Oh. That was just torture. <laughs> My blushing was so embarrassing. Well, how, is it, how would you so know it's embarrassing? Sorry, you refused to watch it. You were like this. I, it's, almost, it's almost worse listening to my voice then. Oh, it's just terrible. But that was my first... I, I think that was... Well, it was my first job that wasn't a commercial, so... Right. Oh, gosh. I hope I'm better now than I was then. <laughs> well, you've, uh, you continue to work, so that might be an indication yeah, yeah. how you do it. You know, when we play that clip of Law & Order, when we play these clips, it's really as a celebration of your work. Oh, what are you going to show now? I'm so scared. <laughs> no. Well, what? well, what would be the one that you wouldn't want to see? I don't know if we had that. I mean, most of them. Okay, I, oh, oh, sh <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm going to start crying. <laughs> Oh my god, this is my worst nightmare. I feel like I'm in hell. If this is your worst nightmare, you have good nightmares. <laughs> oh my god, this is just... I can't. <laughs> oh, there's more? Oh my god. Oh, my, my sister. My mom says that it's all stunning. They did it to themselves.
That's the two of you coming together. I, you know, I started out hating that clip, but now I love it. Um, I sort of forgot about that. Yeah, that's a movie you did with her. What's it called? Bloody, Bloody Mary? I mean, she probably has not, still not forgiven me for that. Um, yeah, it's called Bloody Mary, mm -hmm. and um, I, I think it was 11 years ago that I shot it. Um, and we needed, we needed um, girl number two, and I said, well, my sister is an actress, and we should fly her here. And so that was Rooney's first ever job. <laughs> she becomes girl number two. Yeah, she's done all right for herself now, so right. I don't feel so bad. House of Cards, season one's on Netflix right now. Kate Mara, everybody.